As you can see, we have a lot of amazing teammates here that are super excited to chat about what we do here, uh, how we hire, and give you a lot of tips and tricks. And whether you're interested in joining Replit, choosing a career in mobile engineering, infrastructure, people, legal, business, the whole thing, we're here for you to chat. So I encourage you, I'm gonna speak for about 20 minutes and then Kenton and I with Paula are gonna stay on this thread and you are welcome to go off and join another thread. We'll have our engineers joining. I'll remind you this at the end of the presentation here. No pop quiz, promise. And then we'll also have our design, business, community, marketing, and more business focused roles as well on another session. So to kick off, hi. If we don't know each other yet, my name's Megan. I joined the team in August of 2020. So it's been a little over a year and a half and we were a strong and mighty team of 12 when I joined. And to share a little bit about my career path, uh, it's been a bit twisty. I came from a company as a co-founder and it didn't work out. And one of the best lessons as we all know is dealing with honestly failure. And I always had a love and passion and a hobby for coding. Kind of thought here and there I might go into engineering and then decided, no, I really like business. And I had a summer of learning and I had a friend who wanted to learn how to code. And we spent an hour and a half, I'm running Linux, he's running OS, and I could not help him download and install packages on a local IDE. And I thought it scared him away from a career transition. Instead, he came back to me with what I thought was an Italian company and ended up being Replit. And it was magical. It was so fun. We started coding right along with each other. I taught him some syntax, got him up to recursion. It's magic to me. And yeah, we had a lot of fun. So I'm here to share about how we scaled our team from last or two summers ago, uh, around 12 people to now we're over 60. So with that in mind, we really, heavily focus on why. Why are we around? What do we look for? Beyond some really strong technical and hard skills that we look for in teammates, it's really important that everybody here, whether they're new to Replit or they've been since the very beginning, that they're all invested in the mission. And that is part of helping to bring the next billion coders online. This technical literacy is a raison d'etre, if you will. It's, our, it's a reason why we wake up in the morning and work at a startup. So part of that is one person is not going to do that. It is a group effort. So into that is we have millions of community members. We have thousands joining Replicon today. We are 60 people less over at Replit. So we have to think radically. We have to think outside of the box. How can we scale and ensure we build for our wonderful community with such a strong and mighty team? So part of that is when we see somebody have a twinkle in their eye and they get really excited about something, it's a strong encouragement over here to say, hey, you should, you should pull on that thread, see where it leads. And this is where a lot of this fun stuff that was getting announced today is coming from are these ideas and it's not just siloed into what the team that we're on or the pod we're working on, but constantly exchanging ideas for other things that we don't do on a regular basis. Another part of that is what we call urgency and focus. We don't just sit back, make sure it's perfect and then ship it. No, we, we don't want things to break. We try really hard to make sure what we release is amazing, but, we really tend to ensure that we are making things go fast. And it's really honestly exciting and satisfying to work this way. So if that sounds like you, you should chat. You should definitely look into startups. So what's in the name? Rosa smell is sweet, right? But really it's something that we embody over here. Ours for us being sweet. We're inquisitive. We talk to our community members. We look at data. And then we dog food the goodness out of Replit to ensure that what we're doing is what we use internally and then we ship it out to our community so they can enjoy it and then give us feedback because the next thing to do, oops, sorry, is actually evaluate. So we turn this data, it's great to understand things and go through, but we need to evaluate, not just one ear out the other, but to really sit with it and make sure that we can 
do the best we can do with it. So that leads us into P, print, part of the REPL. So we want to get this out. It's part of the urgency and focus, right? Because you can think forever, but you gotta get, let it go out into the world and get some feedback. And so there's very low ego when it comes into that. We wanna hear your thoughts. And last is for loop. So the faster everything goes out, the faster we learn, the faster we can improve, and the sooner you get to play with what we work with. Next one is, uh, oh, we seek pain. We don't run away from the roar. Like, please be kind. We try really hard. We really care about what we do, but also give it to us straight. We want to hear from feedback, not only from our teammates, but also from our community and other people, particularly if you're new to Replit. We love hearing that fresh, early perspective. So we run towards that, and honestly, it's probably one of our biggest competitive advantages as a startup. And then from there, we're for people. So this is a little sneak peek to, I think, an image that's not very much out there. This is from our Hack Week. And our Hack Week, we do once a year. And we get together, either online or in person if we can. And we run with some really cool stuff. It's a hackathon. It's internal. And so a lot of, again, the things you're seeing today came from Hack Week. They've been kind of percolating in our brains for a little bit. And then we decided, hey, gather a team together. We pitched it. People formed teams. And then we had a big demo of it. So this is our picnic after that with oh, about maybe half of our teammates were there in person. So a little bit of tips and tricks. Um, we are a ton of different things. When I first started, I think we had like three roles open. Now I we have a lot <laughs> and a lot more that we want to launch as soon as we can continue to build our people and recruiting team so that we can hire on more people and support them when they come on. So we hire for all these things. People are here. Our hiring managers, aka our Dan's, our Scott's, our Lima's, our Jeremy's, our Baron, they're here today and are excited to chat with you in just a few minutes. So if you are curious about one of these fields or you're already in this career, Come chat with us. We're open books. We'd love to get into it with you. And so for how we interview, first step is we chat with a recruiter or a hiring manager. This is typically a 30-minute meeting. It's a get to know you, and I call it a 10-10-10. First 10 questions or 10 minutes is around the fact of like, hi, how are you? Icebreaker conversation and get to know what you're doing. So we see a resume. Everybody reads the resume and all the email or the information you put in and if you submitted a warm-up code challenge. We look into that, I promise you, humans are behind there. And then we go in and chat with you for 10 minutes. And then we go into logistics, like what's your pacing for interviews? We like to keep at least 10 minutes so we can chat with you and start answering your questions. After that, it depends which track you're in, which job you're applying for, it can change, but it's digging into your hard skills. So seeing what you know, digging deeper into areas of are you fit for this role? Maybe it's pure product engineering. Maybe it's more workspace. Sometimes we see triple sets in all of them. So it's really funny to see behind the scenes Slack conversations go off and seeing how we pace into the interviews. That happens with the technical screen. And then from there, we're heavily project-based on our on-sites. So we highly focus on making sure that you can show and demonstrate your skills and not focus on you know, solving algo puzzles and we really want to see a really functional display of what you know whether that's within people operations and you've done that before and you're going into that or you're a security engineer we want to see what you actually can and do do on a daily basis so that's how we design our virtual on-sites um, from there we go into a founder's call so before that we actually send you our operating principles which I think landed in our blog post last week. And it's really important, again, that you read them. There's no pop quiz. We're not going to ask you. Seek pain. Sentence three, what's it say? It's not about that. It's about what they mean to you and having a conversation with our founders so that we can ensure that you're really going to like working here because we hire for the long term. We don't want you to just be like, OK, well, we'll see you in a year. We want you to be with us for years and years and years. And really important. So some generalized tips going into some fun things is, again, we don't do gotcha questions. We don't do algo puzzles. Things are very functional knowledge. We want to see how you solve problems. From there, it's highly collaborative. 
We are humans behind the screen. We are having conversations with you. I promise I'm not a robot. And it's not all Q&A on either end. Like, don't ask us all the questions. We want you to lead the interviews. We also don't want to just be answering the whole time. Are you answering the whole time and have it not interactive? Because we are a remote team. We're highly communicative. We look for communicative, um, proactive communicators. And we want to make sure that we can dynamically create together in whatever role that you're applying for. And then also, whether again, you're interviewing for something along the lines of engineering or recruiting or legal, we want to think, have you think it through in a clean and functional manner. Can you build something? Can you share how you've built something? And take us through the step-by-step -step process because we only have a finite amount of time. We want to be able to see that you can build something fast and iterate and you really embody the REPL kind of process. Awesome. From there, I'm actually a little bit early, so that's fine. Uh, we have, as I mentioned at the very beginning, some amazing teammates here who are so excited to chat with you. So if you'd like to just take a few moments and think about some questions about how do you interview for data? How do you interview for design? Anything along those lines, we're going to break out Sorry, not truly break out, found out that we broke it that way. We're going to have other sessions and we will have some teammates in there. We have our amazing VP of Inge, Dan, helping to discuss all things Replit and hiring. We have Lima here as well, digging deep into mobile with you. Scott, who is fearlessly holding down both workspace and platform. And also Jeremy, who's been with us for quite some time, which is Awesome, he is our product engineering manager. So they'll be in one session starting around 12.20. Might be there a little early and start chatting if you like. We'll have another time at the same time starting at 12.20ish. We have Chilia, who is our general counsel and head of business, holding down all your questions if that kind of career interests you or you're already in it. We have Lena, of course, person who created RepoCon for us, sharing a lot of deep insights within our community and marketing teams. And of course, Baron, amazing designer, has been helping us hire and build out our designer codes, product engineers. We're looking for a web and content designer. If anybody's interested, go over and chat with these folks. They're super excited to answer your questions. And then last but not least, Kenton is our amazing recruiter here. We have another one joining us on Monday. We're so excited. Him and I, and as well as Tala, who is amazing. She was helping us with people and being our intern for there until she switched over recently to community. So she's going to be here with us, staying on this link here, more focused on people, which means people operations, experience, things along those lines, as well as recruiting. So. We're so excited to chat with you. Feel welcome to drop over to the other areas. And yeah. So yes, as we said, we're already having some questions come in. That's fantastic. Um, feel welcome to drop over here or again, stay in this session if you want to chat with people in recruiting. Awesome. So the team just went into the other areas. I still see quite a few people here. So I'm going to open up the Q&A. Well, actually, before I do that, let's take a moment. And I would love, you know about me now. Hi. Um, Kenton, would you like to share a little bit about yourself, your, your path into your career, what you do here, favorite color? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, favorite color. I don't have one. I, I used to say anything that looks good on me, but my ego is the size of the sun. So I think everything looks good on me. Um, moving on from there, uh, the the way that I got into recruiting uh, was I started off as uh, a maintenance worker with a, a small maintenance company, and they told me that they needed help uh, finding people who could fill in for the summer. And it was literally a right place, right time thing because I did that. And then they were like, well, uh, we're looking at expansion. So could you find a way to keep these people on um, a little longer? And so I became the de facto HR manager there. 
And uh, from there, I moved on to FedEx. Once that company stopped growing, I moved on to FedEx uh, to be a human resources operations administrator, um, which, you know, it's you, you would think in a major corporation that you wouldn't have to wear multiple hats, but that is not the case. Uh, so did a lot of recruiting there as well. And then uh, the last stop I was before here was Conduit, where I transitioned from, I started off as high volume, uh, transitioned to technical as well as executive. And um, it, was a, it was a good run, but I felt like I was ready for the next challenge. And so um, I have come here and I, I'd like to think that we've had a little bit of success. I think we've exactly doubled team size in the six months that I've been here. And we're on pace to triple head count since the beginning of the year. So um, this replit has been great to me. And, and uh, this has been an absolute delight and joy to be here. So when, when Megan talked about that recruiter uh, screen or hiring manager, if you don't talk to the hiring manager, I am the arbiter of truth here. No, I'm just joking. I'm, uh, I'm the recruiter that you'd be speaking to. So. Cheers. Thank you, Kenton. And Tala. Yes, hello everyone. Um, so when I started off as an intern, I was mostly focused more on the sales side, which was really nice on Teams for Education. And then I transitioned into People Ops, which is super fun. Uh, and now, yes, I'm more in the community. Awesome. So I don't know if anybody has some fun um, looking at these closed captions, but when I introduce Tala, it's a pen and teller. So hopefully they're still getting through. Awesome. So yeah, I see some questions coming in and I'm going to uh, go through some of them because I want to make sure that we can get to them. And again, this session is more focused on people, recruiting, and also if you just want to chat with a bunch of recruiters, like we're happy to give you all the dirt that goes into different things and the processes and behind the scenes look of like how we actually hire here. But again, if you want to talk more specifically about engineering, um, platform, product, mobile, anything along those lines, jump on over to that engineering hiring session. And we have four amazing teammates holding that down. In addition, we have Chilia, a few other folks, Lena <laughs> and Baron holding on design. So that's the other session going on. So we're going to focus heavy into the nitty gritty of recruiting and people. Cool. So going into there, um, if I'm bad at algorithms, is there a chance to apply? Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll have a code warm up session. Um, and we do this because we think it's absolutely evil to throw you into something that we work with on a daily basis for a lot of the teams, but also you probably have never seen before. Like, what is with that? That's, that's not how you program. That's not how you think through things as a business perspective. Like you've done these things before. And so that's why we do the code challenge warm up. If you don't submit that, we don't consider your application, just heads up. So make sure you get that in. If there is a pre challenge, I promise you a human is looking at that. And while you might not be a good fit now, um, it should be still kind of fun to get into. Um, from there, are remote outside US contract based opportunities at Replit? Yes. Uh, do we offer sponsorship? Yes. Caveat. <sighs> Visas are hard, they're long, they're never a guarantee. And it really depends on your personal experience and growth, education everything there's so many variables and factors that go into there that we can never promise a visa situation but we can promise is that we're going to try and we have a immigration specialist actually that works with us very closely and constantly in his inbox to help us with this so again can never promise you a visa but we can promise we will try that said we are a remote team we have teammates all around the world there's zero requirement to move here into the states so we hire internationally and we're, we're really pushing harder to build into that more. Cool. Um, for Trevor, do you need teachers or teacher evangelists? We do, actually. Um, I don't know if any roles are open. I think we just hired a few, but Lena in that session over there is a good one to ask. Um, are remote contract based opportunities available at Replit? Answer that. Yes. So are we hiring, uh, hiring pen testers? Um, I believe so, actually. If you want to jump over, if you're still here, Patrick, 
uh, jump over to engineering, we are building out our security team. All right, Leopold, how much DevOps involved in the back end? Do back end developers move focus on DevOps works? That's a good question. Go share with Dan if you're still here. All right, I don't have the experience in a specific role. Can I apply? Yeah. We actually released uh, a role called general engineering. I'm presuming this is engineering. Um, I think we just yeah, hired two people. Cool. Yeah, Kenton, do you want to talk about that a little bit of how we released that, that process and like what's going on? Absolutely. So we released uh, the, and, and I don't know who you are because you're, you're labeled as anonymous, but we released that role specifically for people like yourself. We are, again, we want the team to be as diverse as our user base. All of our user bases are not experts in C, are not experts in Rust, are not experts in Go, are not experts in React. We have a lot of people who know everything moderately. And so with that being said, we'll look at the skills that you have. We'll look at what your resume says you've done. And we will um, try to parse out of there where we can get the, the most value for yourself and for the team. Because at the end of the day, we don't view our teammates as workers. We're all team members. We all um, are in a company that is has extremely high goals and, and putting our putting our teammates in the best place for success is how we're going to accomplish those. And with that being said, that is why that general engineer spot was necessary to have a place for generalists who have not dug deeply into front end, back end, dev to have somebody or somebody's who are, you know, who have touched the surface of many things, but haven't deeply penetrated into one. That's that's something that we're absolutely excited about. So if you're still here, yes, and anybody who's listening, yes, we do hire uh, for people who don't have experience in specific areas or who are not great at one particular thing. Yeah, and to share a little bit, because we got time, let's chat. Um, when I started, actually, we were looking heavily for generalists. We, we could not bring on specialists. We just, we needed to be... I wouldn't say jack of all trades, but we would have to do a bunch of different things. We're multiple hats, if you will. So it's also really important for us, for our team to be able to grow as we grow as a team. What you're doing and how you're doing it at 12 people is different at 60, way different at 120. Moon's the limit, at least for us. So I don't know how big we'll get. We'll see. And part of that really is to ensure that you can be, hmm, I haven't really done that before, but I have an interest. So I'm going to dig in and lead this project. It happens across the team. So, yes, when we do hire for more business roles with the umbrella of finance or marketing, legal, people, recruiting, all of those, we still look for people that are multifaceted and are just curious. And that really shows on resume and how they interact in our interviews. Cool. Tell I see the next one up. We answered it a teeny bit, but do you want to share more about your experience interning here? There we go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I feel like this relates back to what you were just saying, how they're just playing so many roles. Like as an intern, it's been such a great opportunity. I'm never doing like the same thing for the entire time since I've started. I've got to like work in different teams and take on different projects. And it's such a great opportunity. You really develop new skills and things I didn't even think I was interested in. Like people ops wasn't really something that I knew I really liked from university. It was more of like, you're in there like, oh my God, this is really interesting. I wanna help out more here. So yeah. Yeah, we, we definitely not only build our internships like that, so you can explore a bunch of different things, because that's the point of an internship is to be able to grow and explore and see which step after school or even if you're not in school, like that first step into your career of where you want to go into. And I'm telling you, especially nowadays, it, it's even more so now people are very fluid where they're going and in their career, what they are doing now, what they asked themselves five years ago, their five-year-old or five-year ago self, they a lot of times be like, huh, I didn't think I'd come down this path. You know, some tracks, of course, that's kind of how it is. But yeah, really allowing to explore, get creative and um, 
build into your passion to get paid for that, that's what we are after and that's what we support. Cool. All right. So we talked about the internship a bit. Um, oh, Moby, if you're still here, I see some replies. But yeah, we don't just hire developers. Absolutely not. We are absolutely hiring for the business team. Um, we look for people that have the same qualities, if you will, across the board. So what I shared earlier about our operating principles, whatever role you're applying for, we apply that into our interview process. And that really shows um, how you think through problems, how you communicate about your experience. Business analyst, I don't know if that team's hiring right now, but um, Antoine's not on the call, but if you wanna jump over, if you're still here, jump on over to the business section and, and go chat with our folks over there. Awesome. Um, hmm, no one spoke through McKenna. Will Replic go past coding environment? Are there goals such as teaching, innovating new software, jumpstarting new projects? Yeah. I've, I've been approving uh, <laughs> questions. I've been approving questions here. So some of these just kind of jumped up. Uh, that If you're seeing them jump, that's why. Awesome. Got you. Got you. Thank you, Ken. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, okay. how I think about Replit is written word. And knowing how to write, type, read, it's literacy. It's, it's the basis, it's the fundamental building blocks into getting into different things. So now, do I code every day? No. Should I? Yeah. Um, but if I see a script broken and it's something along the people up line, I'll just jump in there and be like, oh, okay, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, I can dig in there and help with something. You know, really are never easy to read. But if it's one of those other languages, I can dig in and um, build up something and I'm not intimidated by it. I can just go fix it. And I'm not an engineer. And I can write, but I'm not a published author. That's the kind of the difference of how we think about it. So how we think of Replit, it's this fundamental building block to be able to be creative, to have a lot of fun. And whether you're going to be that published author, that engineer, or you're working on a highly technical team on a highly technical product, we look for people that they may not code on the business end, but they can definitely learn about it and are excited about it and really again embody our mission and understand it we love new teammates if they don't know how to code and we're like ha, 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 ha. we're gonna start building on some stuff so we usually let them settle in for one to three to four months and we're like got a project for you whether it's a blog post or getting involved in a video or taking over our newsletter which is coded through Replit internal newsletter, not our community newsletter. We, we have a company-wide one that we send out. Um, that That is great examples of how we help our teammates grow and explore within code. Cool. Um, how experienced do you have to be to get hired? That's a good question. Um, Kitten, do you want to go in there first? Sure thing. So for, for any position we have except the internship, you will need some level of formal experience even for our early career positions um you'll need just at least a contract or two under your belt so that we know you've done this in a professional setting because let's be honest what our mission is extremely important and with that being said we again want to bring everybody in to a situation that we can expect you to succeed in how do you learn how to do anything right i played football for 17 years i didn't get good at um at hunting down quarterbacks by osmosis it was practice it was reps day in day out and then i got to the games and played in those and, and so on and so forth so i say all that to say that there is a baseline of at least one professional um thing there but we take in the totality totality of who you are uh, depending on whatever role you're looking at. So, for example, as an engineer, we take in the totality of, okay, yes, this person only has one thing that they've done formally, but what do their projects look like? What do they have going on outside of that? What other things are there to convince us this person will have success here? Same thing for all of our other positions, biz ops, people, anything that you can name, we're asking the same question. 
what indicators of success do we have here? Because that at the end of the day is the, the most important thing. We don't look at arbitrary things that don't matter. Uh, we have teammates who did not graduate from college. We do. And we don't look at them and say, oh, my God, you, you didn't have a degree. You must be a quitter. We don't. Life circumstances are different for everybody. Things work the way that they work. And, and you know, if you can come in and you have the skill, the piece of paper won't dissuade us because you don't have it. Um, we have teammates who graduated from boot camps who are self-taught. And we also have teammates who have master's degrees in computer science. It's not about what you do or don't have in terms of um, experience in that, oh, we're not hiring anybody who's super high level. We literally have multiple positions that have um, software engineer platform early career. We're also about to open up software engineer workspace IDE early career because we don't want people to be afraid to apply simply because you don't have eight years of experience. That's not the case. I haven't been in recruiting for eight years. And like I said, we've doubled the team in six months on pace to triple. You know, there's I'm not the exception here. I'm the norm. Plenty of people come in and do what we do at a high level, even if we haven't been doing what we do for 10 to 15 years. Here, here. And yeah, a little glad you guys are here. I didn't even know we we're opening up early career for workspace. So you heard it here first. Keep an eye on our jobs page. Awesome. Tala, do you want to go a little bit into, and you don't have to be fully specific, but maybe some advice or tips and tricks around how international students can get credits from Revlet? Is there a process in place that you want to share a little bit more? And by the way, you're on mute. Yeah, for sure. Um, do credit, like credits in terms of... I'm not yeah. sure. So the question verbatim is how can international students get credits from Replit to put in our application? So I know it might depend obviously on your school. My school offers a program called co-op. So for that is you're registered as like an intern within like the school as well as in their system. So you do get like three credits, I think, um, through your internship. Uh, I personally did not opt in for that. Uh, there's like other things with the school, like rules and stuff, but it really depends on the school. So I'm not too sure how deep I can go into it, to be honest. Um, it's very like specific to what your school offers. It's, it's along the lines of visa situations or if high schoolers can join our team. It, there's so many variables in place um, that We'll try to do a little bit beforehand, especially if you're getting towards tech screen and we want to be absolutely sure we're not going to be like, oh, screeching halt. We can't actually hire you right now. <laughs> so um, doing a little bit of research with your school or with your uh, local laws, those are really important, not just for Replit, but for everything. So to know that you're putting time, effort into these applications, we want to make sure that you get full consideration. So um, yeah, a little bit of little bit of search will do you a lot of good. Um, I'd recommend reaching out to your faculty advisor. They usually have a lot of feedback and like, they know how the system is, so they can help you out. Awesome. All right. So the chat's jumping around on me a little bit. Um, let's go back to the latest and refresh. Latest. All right. How do we apply, Miriam? Um, someone answered in here, but I'm going to go a little deeper into there. So, yes, Tala linked our careers page. So um, if you want to have a little bit of fun, you're more than welcome to apply through the shell. Uh, fun fact, when I joined, um, I was just starting to look around again for uh, a company to join and put, you know, dip my toe in some water, started interviewing a process to very select companies. And I, I saw just this terminal. And I was like thinking, I was like, refresh. This is the careers page? This is the careers page. And again, we were 12 people. We had like one other business person on the team dedicated to business levels. And I was like, this is my kind of crew. Uh, so I applied that way. And, but then I realized that, you know, we really want to share more information about if you join us in full time, uh, what do those benefits look like? How do we interview? Sharing additional details. I love that seven reasons video. That was so fun. Um, we want to share that kind of information. So you are welcome to click through the links and go into Lever. Totally cool. You're welcome to have and have a little fun around the shell. I believe there's still an Easter egg in there. Um, 
I haven't seen it cracked yet. It's supposed to email me and tell me, so I haven't seen that email yet. So uh, there's an Easter egg hiding in the ground in there. Um, yeah, so you're welcome to apply through either of those ways. Just when we ask a few questions, you do not need to write a novel, but don't put in like an A or um, that, 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 or talk to you, talk about this when I talk with you. We do get a lot of applications and our first interaction with you is in pure writing. You're just this awesome person who decided to spend time and apply to our team and we're so excited to see all this information. But if we don't have the information we and someone else does, we're, we're, we're going to decide to interview that other person. So again, do not spend over amount of time, but just a thoughtful amount of time to reply to some of these things so we can get the conversation started. And again, real people are reading every single resume and application. So you know, we, we take a lot of our time to dig into it in top of our responsibilities within holding it on people or going through all recruiting or um, building out all this amazing stuff that we're building out. Like this is part of our job. But being able to dig into it and hire and build out more teammates, we know we're just going to be able to build even more. So it's a big part of our job as well. So go in there, have fun with that application and, and fill it out. Again, somewhere between talk to you soon and an entire novel is always really good. All right. And, and just again, to be clear, because I've seen a lot of these, um, we do hire internships. We do. We are full this year. We have a lot of full-time employees that we're hiring that we also have to vote a lot of our time to make sure that we onboard them correctly and help them ramp up quickly and feel really supported because we take on this um, village onboarding mentality, if you will. So we have a lot of folks helping on a brand new teammate. So inherently, we, we cannot bring on too many interns. We would love to bring on more, but more mid and senior teammates that we have in their field. They, they've just been in their career for five, 15, 25 years. The more folks we can hire that are just starting out in their careers. So we are full for the summer. Typically around late October, we'll release for a few weeks only, short time, we'll open up our applications and we don't really post them around. We will share them maybe on Twitter, but normally it's just on our careers page. And if you're in there and if you're active in the community and you see it, apply because we are going through those for sure. And typically this year we decided to hire one intern per team. So we'll have one in the already in. Oh, we have one for design. We have one for workspace, platform, product, mobile, data. Um, I don't think we're hiring anything for people yet but maybe soon. And we have a uh, early career open actually for recruiting coordinator. Now that's not an internship, that is a full-time employee with a little bit of experience. But I think once we flush out that team and we have our head of talent come on in late May, we, we may be able to open something up if you're interested in diving into recruiting as your career. Well, all right, so let me refresh latest. Sweet. So I see 50 people here. Do any of you have specific questions? Um, oh, here's one, Marshall. So weird reason you're not at the top. It was seven minutes ago. So here's a good one. Um, all right, Kenton, do you want to feel this? I'll, I'll read it out to you because I found it. And then if you want to answer, that'd be fun. Oh, yeah, I approved that question. So, yeah, I know the, the question that you're referring to. Um, Marcel, we we touched on this a little bit earlier. We want you to generally have at least one uh, one thing of one listing of, of formal experience. Again, it's, it's not it's not because um, we don't believe that anybody without this can't be good at recruiting or at whatever their role is but it's about putting everybody in the best position for success. And trust me, even as a recruiter who had been in recruiting for some time before I got here, um, the there were, this was my first experience in deep tech. So there was a little bit of, I wouldn't say friction, but there was a learning curve in getting adjusted to 
uh, the ways in which certain things work differently here than anywhere else I've been. So we are not um, opposed to early career at all. That's not something that we're like, oh, no, no there's there's no way under God's green earth. Again, Megan referred to the um, the recruiting coordinator position, who we expect to grow into a recruiter as we scale and as we polish. But uh, for the time being at the moment, we're looking for if you are coming on as a recruiter, we're going to expect you to have some experience in recruiting, preferably deep tech, but at least something where you've hired engineers in your past. That is um, that's what's going to be ideal for us as far as what we're looking for. And that's that is what we want, because, again, we want to put you in a position for success. Like I I they tell me to stop saying this, but I'm sorry, I'm never going to stop. The fact of the matter is it's expensive to let people go. It is. It, it's expensive because every person that we have to let go, we have to then go out, reopen the uh, reopen the applications. We have to hope that one of the people who we had, who we turned down for the person we took is still available. And if not, then we got to get the search ramped all the way back up. And now we're looking back again for a position simply because we didn't do our due diligence on our part in um seeking the candidate and then on your part we would have a it would be a situation where a worker's out of a job and for what reason because we simply didn't do our due diligence so again it's it's not a thing of like you have to be in this for 10 years because i haven't even been out of college for 10 years right i'm only 26 the bald head fools people often but the reality is we want you to be in a position for success we want the company to be in a position for success so just some experience in the realm that you're applying for is ideal for us. Awesome. And yeah, exactly. I cannot reiterate. We hire for long term. We we want our teammates to be here for years and years and years. Um, so it's really important for us to get that interview process right. And also for you to make an informed and fully educated decision if we're the right team for you. Um, yeah. So I see a really fun one too. Um, There's an anonymous 10 minutes ago. What about countries like Pakistan for internship for new aspiring data analysis, who knows Python, having a certificate volunteering just for learning. So if you don't know about this wonderful company called Manara, that's M-A-N-A-R-A, they are amazing. They, I believe, started focused about a year and some change ago on Palestine specifically and health having a real strong path for talent there to um, get connected with uh, remote teams all across the world, deep tech. So we actually had a few wonderful interns coming from Manara and I just checked on their website and it looks like they have expanded to more countries in the Middle East, as well as Africa. So the reason why I bring them out, sorry, we're not invested in Manara, there's anything like that. I just, I know them, I know the founders, they're fantastic and they're really passionate about their work. And very high level over that is they'll bring you into their program. They help, they don't charge anything. They, they help you get coaches and advice with professionals in the career that you're interested in bring you through and they, when they think you're ready, they'll introduce you to teams like ours and say, hey, they have our stamp of approval. We think they are great. Here's their strengths and their weaknesses and what they're growing into and their passions. Do you want to interview them? And almost always we're like, uh, yeah, we would love to chat. So absolutely, we hire across the globe. Bringing this perspective from a global perspective, my experience in life living in California is entirely different than someone living in wonderful Asia somewhere, or perhaps in South America, we have different experiences in life. We experience Repo and see it very similar, but also differently. It's just inherently how we live life, living in different areas. So for us, it's really important that we continue to scale globally. Now, that said, we are still a teeny team. Um, bigger teams are able to structure into more accommodating hours. Um, we can't quite yet. So we have a joke internally, and it's not a joke, is a replit standard time. So whatever the West Coast of uh, the Americas, so that would be Pacific Daylight Time right now, PT. Um, we're online. We take our interviews. We If we have meetings, they're usually between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific. So perspective 
if it's like 4 a.m. for you right now, we're still going strong. And if you're working that day, we, we expect you to be communicative or take meetings. And so that's always why you have to ask yourself, like, oh, can I can I do that realistically? Am I going to thrive? Am I going to be happy? Am I going to have a healthy life outside of work, being able to do that in those time zones? So, yeah, as we scale, we we know we were able to soften and have more areas around the world that we can have realistic and healthy working hours. But as it stands right now, and that's why we are also skewing towards most of our teammates are in North America. It's just because we can't let go of that restriction right now very easily. It's just when we connect, we all agree to be online and collaborate with each other. So heads up, food for thought for that. Stay tuned though. We keep growing. We'll change eventually. Cool. Um, let's go back into the Q and A. So latest. Uh, ooh, this is a good one. Kira, I'm a high school student, or not high school. What subjects do you recommend that I study for a career in coding? Mm, that's a good question. I honestly, how do I, how do I phrase this? You can absolutely study in, in school. If you're lucky in your high school is A, teaching you how to code, um, B, reserves time for that. Oh my gosh, count your lucky stars. I didn't have that. Um, how I got into my career was on my own time and dime. It's how I like to say a lot. And honestly, that's for a lot of folks. So yes, being in a structured environment, having everything um, handed to you and say, if you complete, this and really not just read it, it doesn't go one ear out the other, but you really internalize it, understand it, play with it, build into it. And if you got that, you're on to this next step. Amazing. And that's why a lot of these really famous colleges uh, that, that specialize in, say, law, in medicine, in engineering, those are so well known because they have proven time and again that they've really thought through the curriculum. And by the end of that, those folks are almost plug and play for an early career. Like they're not going to be able to be like, I don't know what I'm doing. They can, they can figure it out because they've been well-trained and they know how to get into different things. Now that said, more than half of our team did not do that in any way, shape or form, whatever role that they're in into there. So they've learned on their own, this kind of like hacker mentality of like, not the dumb little robot that keeps bumping into a wall. They're able to be like, huh, that's not giving me what I need. I do want to finish my degree or, finish school in whatever capacity that looks like, but they're able to get creative and say, I'm not being taught the latest and greatest frameworks. And I know I want to get into some more kind of product engineering or design. And I am not at a place as though I'm going to finish it to get that, that degree. And there is value, a lot of value learning about art, history, English, written communication, super important. Um, but if it's not tactical, tangible things, Kind of learn it on your own. And that's really one of the huge value props of Replit is there's this capacity, there's this community that is learning as well. Also within the amazing curriculum for a lot of these devoted and passionate teachers to build out the best process for you. But if you don't have one of those and access to that, you can still go find it on yourself and go build into that. So yeah, clearly I'm very passionate about also um, really strong curriculum as well as figure it out <laughs> independently. Cheers. So hopefully I answered your, your, your question, Kira. Um, you just learned HTML, CS Plus, good advice. They're listening. Oh, hi, Luna. So I'm guiding a little group of college students that are dipping their toes into software development, and they just learned HTML, CSS, Python, JavaScript. They're looking to apply in the industry. Any good advice? They are listening. Hi, college students. How are you doing? How's it going? Um, again, I would say this this might be actually standing out from the crowd. Um, it is not a secret that early careers and internships, we launch a role and we don't put any marketing budget behind that. We don't really announce that much because why? We'll get hundreds of applications. I, I made it Ipsy my, my first year here and, and posted it on one job board that went really wide and got on a bunch of newsletters. And I had 
it was just me, by the way, holding down a bunch of different roles and also our internship. And I had over 500 applicants in the space of like 72 hours. Just coming from that level alone, it was it was overwhelming to say the least. I, I gave up some nights and weekends to make sure everybody got response back. So the key thing is, is what we look for. In any experience level, we look for passion. Um, do you really care about what you're building? And it's kind of hard to fake it. So some of those early projects are super duper helpful to learn, like a Twitter clone, calculators, fun things like that. And it really helps bringing your, your mind around how to build and go into there. But at the end of the day, there is no faking digging into something you actually care about. So whether that be an open source project or if that is something along the lines of um, a random volunteering thing and you offered to rebuild a website for that when you dug in deep into the functionality and then hopefully make sure that they have full access so they can keep it updated. Uh, that's always super appreciated and that stands out to folks that are reading the resume. So being able to dig deep into what you care about and then displaying it and then really flexing on the skill sets, um, that, that is super important and it very much stands out. So yes, with our interns, it's a highly competitive process for, for Replit and for multiple other companies as well. But beyond, um, if you're looking for your first, first chance, getting involved in a community, getting your name known, um, building into projects, communicating. It's kind of like networking to a degree. Your, your name will start rising to the top. And I would say about half of our interns are because you're like, oh, hey, what's up? How are you doing? Oh, you applied. Well, this is your actual name. This isn't just your, your replit name. This is this is awesome. Um, a lot of them will, will rise to the top because we know their work and we go into different things like that. So if there's a company that people are interested in, that, that's a way to do it. But also it's not just about applying, it's about getting the value from being in a community and um, building with other people, getting inspired to create new really cool stuff. And then don't give up, it takes some time. Uh, I shared at the very beginning of this hour, my story of finding Replit, me thinking it was an Italian company and way bigger than it was. Um, that friend changed over from uh, project management work slightly technical but didn't know any code at all he he is the reason why i say if you're still learning how to code and you think python is a snake and not just a, also a language to dig into that came from him it was it was, it was wonderful um happy story after applying as that career switch he joined a boot camp and he grinded for months on end and throughout i think about 350 applications and then he finally found a really good company ace the whole interview process and he's an engineer now and he's great and building deeper into it so it is possible but it is not for the faint of heart so don't let go keep trying finding ways to get into it because once you have your foot in the door within engineering um and just working at a, a deep tech company in general doors really really open as your career continues to progress yeah, and um, uh, Luna and, and your college students who are watching, hey, um, let me let me tell you this. There are two things that they sound contradictory, but they truly aren't. Um, the first one, be thoughtful. And the second one, chase the no. So the first one, be thoughtful. Be thoughtful in where you are applying and how that works out for who you are, okay? Because certain people, they want to have a they want to know that their work is having a grand tangible impact upon the team that they're in and if that's you then a big company is not for you that's just the reality if you go to a big corporation because you're like oh well i i found something you're going to be miserable there and you may end up hating the thing that you love doing the most or something that you would have loved had you gone to a company that was a better fit for you and vice versa. If you're a person who knows you need a lot of structure, you need a lot of things set up, like you don't really do well with the, hey, figure it out, you have carte blanche, but there's nothing here. Then again, a startup may not be for you. Know who you are, be thoughtful about where you're applying to, because you know we all love to hear like, hey, just keep applying to a thousand places and, and everything will be all right. Well, if the wrong one says yes, and you say yes, 
you could end up in a potentially dicey situation there. And the next thing, chase the nose. Um, in terms of in terms of when you find those places that fit what your window or what your what your ideal uh, workspace looks like as in terms of mission, in terms of product, in terms of all the things that matter to you. Get all the no's out the way. Every no that you get, you're closer to the yes. If you find what you want out of these companies, if you create five parameters that you say, this is what I want, and this is, I'm not settling until I get this. You go ahead and apply to every company you can find that fits those parameters. Then guess what? Somebody out of that group is going to say yes. And if you get all no's out of that group, go ahead and remove the parameter you care about the least and do it all over again and do it again and do it again. The 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 fact of the matter is um, this is right now it is a an engineer's market. So if you're graduating with a CS degree right now, congratulations. You got a, a golden ticket to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. OK, the world is your oyster. Um, so be intentional about where you're going because the world is yours, but you don't want to give away that power in just applying, just to apply and saying, Oh, I've, I've got on with this big name. If that's not for you, or I've got on with this startup. I'm one of the, I'm the fourth engineer there. If you're not the type of person who can think through, okay, you have a green field, make a landscape, make me a village. And that's not you. So again, be thoughtful, chase your nose. Cause at the end of the day, if you're chasing those, that means you're putting up shots and eventually something's going to fall and it's going to be the shot that you want. Cheers, cheers. Yes, for sure. All right. So last few, um, maybe maybe one, maybe two tops more. Um, I don't have a good answer for you, David. The question is, are there any opportunities to support the computer science agenda in England, this GS, GCSE and A-level? That's a phenomenal question. Um, who's holding down Tala? Who, who's the, what's the best email to reach out to or what's the best information you can yeah, find? Yeah. yeah, I can add it in the chat right now. Um, I remember going through IGCSEs. Those are not fun, but yeah, reach out to education at Replit. Awesome. Cheers. All right. So uh, we've got approximately what, like 180 seconds left, give or take. Um, any last questions, comments, concerns, funny jokes to share? PG, please. Getting you on mute. Yeah, I just realized that. I just pushed the last few questions up. Uh, so we've got some new ones here. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we can go ahead and rock those out and I think that'll close out our time. Awesome, yeah. Okay, so Ironclad Dev, hi. I thought I recognized that handle. Um, I remember doing an interview with Mr. Ketton and Ferris last year. I think it, Ferris is, is, is in this chat as well, somewhere around here. Do you all look for anything in particular, or particular when hiring interns? Upon what criteria do you search and filter for the right ones? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it, it really depends, I would say, if I had to choose on like top two priorities, is again, what Kenton mentioned, um, experience from before. Um, whether that is open source, whether you're on a team before, even it was small, but still really shows that you're able to collaborate, which is massive on our team. We need proactive communication, strong collaboration, and just a, a joy for what you do, if you will. Sometimes, too, uh, at the end of the day, um, there's just logistics problems. Again, we get a lot of folks coming in that are early in high school and we find out they're freshmen. We're like, okay, what state? Yeah, no, that's not going to work, unfortunately. So that could happen as well. There's some behind um, things, too, that roles can be open for uh, a few days to a few weeks to a few months. And if we have someone further in the process, we want to be fully respective of your time. And in all honesty, we only have so many people here to, that can interview and leave these interviews as well. So if you don't see a response from us back like right away in a couple of days, like a week or so, that might be the case going on as we have people going on sites or founders calls and what we do internally is, is tag people and say, hey, position closed, make a note, reconsider in future in like all caps because we're like, darn, we, we just don't, we don't have carte blanche to hire 
everybody. Some roles are rolling open. You're interested in product inch, platform inch, workspace, go apply. Those are not shutting down. We are hiring for those always. But some roles we have like one that we're able to do. So if we have a couple hundred of people apply for that role, we only have so much capacity. So um, yeah, there's a lot of variables that go into place, but that's the same with interns. Cool, cool. Well, we are at one o'clock. I want to thank you all so much for spending your Saturday or perhaps your Sunday morning with us. Um, we are here. We love chatting with the community. Clearly, we're passionate about what we do, so we love chatting about that all the time. So yeah, I hope to see you on a replit one day. And I hope to see you in the interview with us about to hire you one day, all right? It's, it yes. makes my job much easier when, when we got great people coming in. I promise you, I'm like the Wizard of Oz because everybody thinks I work really hard, but in reality, Replit attracts great people like yourselves. Just don't tell uh, Megan I said that. Let her keep thinking I work really hard. <laughs> I heard you nothing. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Kenton. Thank you, Tala, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day wherever you are in the world. Bye, everybody.